Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. First things first, if you wouldn't mind giving me a like and a subscribe, I would really appreciate it. And whilst you're there, let me know in the comments how you are feeling out of 10. For me, this week, I've been an uncharacteristically low six, I think. And the reason for that and my low of the week is that I've had a sudden realization that we've got so many cows around that I don't know what I'm gonna do for silage next autumn, winter time. Uh, for those of you who don't know, we went down with TB for the first time in February and some of these cattle here would have got sold as stores historically and obviously now we can't sell anything because we get put restricted. The earliest we're going to be able to sell anything realistically is like the beginning of July if we pass both of our tests, which we might not pass. And these guys are eating through silage like it's going out of fashion. I'm going to have to buy some more silage in um, or I'm going to have to feed them silage that we make this year, which will mean that I'll be short of silage for next winter. And it's kind of just blowing my mind. If we knew we were going to be in this position last year, then we would have probably done things differently. But we've never been in this position before. So we just carried on as we would have done. And it's meant we've had to like properly change cropping for the spring and whatever else, which I'll talk about in a bit because it's kind of interesting what we're going to do differently. And I hope it works because it really needs to. Um, high of the week, however, is that I've got a new trick that I can do with my Emily bucket, which is fill the drill. Um, I'm really pleased with this. When we bought the bucket, I was like, oh, I could use that to fill the drill. That'll save me shoveling it in because we drill everything straight out of the heap anyway. Um, and it has. It's been brilliant. First time I've actually used it to fill the drill was this week. And that's what I've done. Really, really pleased with it. So without further ado, Go get yourself a cup of tea, sit down, put your feet up, and I hope you enjoy the video. So as you can see, we've got the drill on and we're gonna go and drill some spring beans in this field just here. We've got about 30 acres of spring beans to put in. We've got this field and the one just the other side of the hedge there to put in. You might be able to see that there's like, it looks probably pretty green to you, but it has been sprayed off. There's a patch here and a patch there that just has a bit of black grass in it. We don't really have much black grass on the farm. We just have these odd little patches that we suffer with. Um, so that's been all round up off. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drill this field. I'd normally drill beans at about 300 kilos to the hectare. I'm gonna drill this half at 350 and then I'll drop down to 300 for the far half over there by the wood because that half is a lot better soil than this half. Um, it can be a bit heavier here, a bit stickier. If you've never seen a Claydon drill before, I'll just give you a bit of a roundup of how we do it because we changed the coulters and that for doing different things. So because we're on beans and we're on spring beans, um, I'll come to this one here. We run this here, which is called like this, we'll call a three inch spoon. So we have the three inch spoon and then we have this little coulter on the back, which we use for beans. Um, if you've got cereals that you're drilling, you'll have like an A share on here and you can have a five, seven or nine inch A share. We tend to run sevens. And then we have a splitter boot on the back, which spreads the seeds into a sort of a band. Um, we have this leading tie in here, which will stick into the ground and it tends to run that a bit lower than the cedar boots. Um, we want that running at probably an inch or so lower, just creates a bit of a drainage channel somewhere for the roots to grow. And then we have the paddle board behind that and then the following harrow behind that. So the paddle board will just fill in the, uh, in the ridges and level it out a bit more, create a bit of tilth on the top and just break it up. And then for that final last bit of coverage, we have that following harrow just there. It's pretty simple. We are lucky. I'm really lucky with this because I've got hydraulic reset tines. Um, we're not very stony here, but when we bought this, we actually got this second hand. We were looking at a new one and the new ones we priced up uh, had just sheer bolt tines on this leg here, but we've got the hydraulic resets on this, which was about, I think it's like four grand option on a new one, something like that. So we weren't gonna spend the money, but we found this one and got it, which is really like, obviously it's got hydraulic markers, full of beans, lights on the back. I love this drill. It's brilliant. I think it's amazing. You can adjust everything on it. Um, it really suits us. It's just not very good for growing things like grass seeds because it's too aggressive. Um, but I've got a bit of an idea for that. We'll talk about that another day. Uh, so let's crack on, shall we? If you're wondering what this field was, this was a spring barley field and then we put a cover crop in it, grazed it with the cows until about Christmas. And then uh, it's just been left to green up again. That's why it's kind of a bit all over the place. It was a cover crop with oats and vetches and um, stubble turnips and forage kale and all sorts of stuff like that in it. But if we just come down here, you can see the difference now if I turn around between this is what's been drilled direct with the Claydon and that's what's not been drilled. So it creates quite a bit of tilt and it moves a little bit of soil, but it is direct. So this piece here is solid. That's not had any movement at all. But then here is where time's ran and where the coulter's ran. And that's where the seed is. 
So it's quite good with the cladium because these solid bits will carry you. If you want to go uh, and spray or anything like that, you can carry um, quite easily with the tractor won't sink or anything like that. It's really good. Um, if we just look here, you'll see this is where Tyne Line's gone through. And that there is a beam. I don't know if you can see that. So the beam is there and that's probably what? If we're looking at that, two and a half inches, three inches, which is perfect for spring beans. Winter beans want to be in quite deep. They want to be at like six inches. I've heard of people spinning them on the top with a third spinner, plowing them in and then power powering the top and just leaving them. And that's worked quite well. But with spring beans, you don't want to be that deep. You want to be running that sort of front tine at like three and a half, four inches. And then the cedar boot behind that at maybe three, two and a half, three inches. You don't really want to be any deeper than that. The reason why I want them quite deep compared to cereal crops is things like crows will just eat them. Crows love pulling them out of the ground in the spring as they're growing. So uh, I think that's pretty, pretty good. Once we've got this field drilled, we'll roll this and these little lumps like this will just be all crushed up. So let's crack on and do a bit more. So as I alluded to earlier, cropping has completely changed uh, from what we were planning to do when we started drilling our winter cereals last autumn to what we're actually having to do now this spring, all because of TV. But we were going to grow a load of spring beans, which we have grown quite a few, but we're going to we've had to reduce our acreage. We were going to grow uh, loads of spring oats and we've reduced the acreage of that. And we were going to grow a bit of spring barley as well. And that's had to be completely taken away because we've got some winter barley in so we shouldn't need to have any more uh, barley because we've still got something to shed that we can just not sell. So instead of growing all of those things or in the quantities that we were expecting to grow them, what we've decided to do is put in some clover lays. Um, so we've got some really good high protein feed on some of what was going to go sort of spring beans. We've moved the other things around a little bit. And we're hoping to under sow that with like under an arable forage. So if you don't want an arable forages or an arable silages, it's kind of like um, a mixture of forage peas and oats, spring barley, that kind of thing. And then you mow it out at sort of end of June and then you can drill after that if you want to, or you can under sow it. So um, we're gonna under sow the, the clover lays under the arable silage and then that should, in theory, give us two cuts of silage off of it and give us a bit more uh, in the way of forage for next year. That's kind of the plan. Um, it could be interesting because I've never under sown anything before, so it'll be fun to see how it goes. So if that all goes to plan, hopefully we'll have some clover lays that we can get a cut of silage off or graze later on in the year, and then they'll be fully established, ready for the sort of next spring, and they can stay down for two or three years then. But then, funnily enough, the guy that I'm just drilling for, um, so I'm doing a bit of contract drilling right now, he grows some arable silage, and I had a bit of a conversation with him about it earlier, and he said, that I could either under sow the arable silage with the clover lay and then drill the arable silage at about a quarter or a third rate so it doesn't smother out the clover lay. Or I could drill a full rate arable silage and then harvest it in June time and in July then drill the clover lay. And he said both will work and he's done both. So I'm kind of interested in maybe doing one half one way and one half the other way and comparing the two and seeing how we get on. The thought then being that we kind of get a good idea which one worked best or whether they were the same, which one produced more silage in the one year. And then when it comes to doing it in future years, we'd have the ability to look back at that and say, well, actually this one worked best for us, so we'll just do it that way. Um, I think it'd be a good little experiment. The other thing I'd like to do is have a bit of a longer rotation around the whole farm. So rather than treating all the arable land as arable land and just growing a bit of grass here and there for the cows, 
just bring everything that can be arable into arable rotation, but grow clover lays, herbal lays, different types of grasses and whatever within the arable lo rotation and really lengthen it out, but just move everything around a lot more. And I think the whole farm will benefit from it because we'll have younger, more productive lays, but we'll also have more cattle kind of integrated within the arable system and everything else. So that's something else I'm kind of looking at for the future as well. And that is it for another video, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Now, if you enjoyed it, please give me a like and a subscribe. I do honestly really appreciate it. We are nearly at 2,000 subscribers, which is mind-blowing to me. Uh, remember to let me know in the comments how you are doing out of 10. And with that all said, go outside, enjoy yourself, because today we've got some absolutely glorious weather. We've got some more good weather coming over the weekend supposed to be better than it has been this week because it's been pretty miserable here this week. Um, but yeah, have a great one. Look after yourselves and I'll see you all next week. Bye.